All right, so uh, this is a continuation of the 12 Tribes of Israel series that will be on YouTube and it will be on the playlist entitled The Identification of the 12 Tribes of Israel. I have talked about, I began this series of studies on identifying who Manasseh is. And if you want to know who that is, you better go look at the video. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ephraim, Yehuda, and also uh, Reuben. Now we are going to identify Natali, okay? And uh, let's go over Genesis 49 again to understand how and why I'm doing this. Um, and Yaakov called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. The Hebrew for that is the Harit Hayamem. It means before the days of the coming of the Messiah. Now, when did that begin biblically? Well, let's take a look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, and it tells us, Yodevahe, who at sundry times and in various manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, and we have a listing of those things in the Tanakh, or what is commonly called the Old Testament, specifically the prophetic books, but prophets are all scattered throughout all most of the books in the Tanakh. In verse 2, have in these Harit Hayamim, okay, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So you have your Bible telling you the, the Harit Hayamim began uh, during the time that Messiah came and he was resurrected. So we're since the first century, we've been living in the Harit Hayamim. And so when we go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 49. And so this is a prophecy of what would occur at the time that the Messiah came and then when he was resurrected. So we've we're been living in the last days ever since. And we're getting closer to the last of the last days. <laughs> Verse 2, and he says, Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Yaakov, and hearken unto Israel your father. Now you know that his name was changed to Israel. It was originally Yaakov. And so I already went over Reuben, and if you want to know who Reuben is, you go li li listen to the Bible study. Uh, we're not going to cover Simeon and Levi today, but we're going to cover uh, Naphtali. Naphtali. Okay? So, Naphtali we're going to cover today. Now, it says right here, and this is interesting, it's like, <laughs> is a hind let loose? And that, that can mean an elk, a female deer, okay? Or moose, okay? So, that's what, so, whoever Naphtali is today, this animal is dominant among the country, okay? So, Natali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words, okay, or beautiful words. And we'll, we'll go over that a little bit today, too. And then what Moses talked about, Natali, in um, Deuteronomy chapter 33, or Naphtali. Naphtali. You can say it that way, too. Okay, where is Natalie? Here he is. Okay. And of Natalie, or Natalie, he said, Oh, Natalie, or Natalie, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the master. So, this tribe, even though it's not going to be as blessed as Ephraim and Manasseh, because they got the birthright, and if you guys want to know what that is, go, go to their playlist and, and review it. And full with the blessing of the, of the Lord. So they're going to have some blessings. So this, uh, whoever Natali is, they are really blessed. Possessed out of the west and the south. So they're going to be west and south of um, where they're located. So we're going to look at the geography of where this country is located. Okay, so which country today of the western nations has as the symbol a deer? Okay, well, let's take a look here. Well, that country is Norway, all right? Uh, let's take a look at this article here. It says, what is the national animal of Norway, all right? The moose, or the elk, is the official national animal of Norway, all right? Alsace is the scientific name of the moose. It is also known as the elk, which is dwelling in a temperature, the subarctic climates, and the boreal forest and temper, temperate broad leaf, also in mixed forests of the northern hemisphere. The national enemy of, uh, not enemy, 
animal of Norway, the moose, as found in the range, includes almost all Canada, most of Alaska, and so forth. Okay, and so um, it's also located in other areas, but in this specific area, Norway took it upon it being symbolic of the country. Okay, so uh, there's other information that that talks about that as well. It says Norway's national animal moose is extraordinarily agile for its size and all that. All right, so I just wanted to uh, show you that. Now, here's something else I wanted to let's see. Where is it? Right here, Norway. And it talks about here at the bottom. Here, we're going to go to the climate here. Okay, we had the geography here, and then I wanted to get over here to biodiversity here, the environment. Okay. So the largest predator, well, I don't want to talk about the largest predator. The largest land animal on the mainland is the elk, or, or it's a moose, and that's a deer. All right? The elk in Norway is known for its size and strength, and it's often called, I guess that's in Norwegian, I guess, Skogens Konge, which is the king of the forest. Now, that's interesting. So we have Norway. And they have an animal that they consider the king of their force, which is a deer or an elk or a moose, which, of course, the scriptures identify with Natali being having something to do with a deer. And so when we go back to Genesis in these uh, last days, which began in the first century. So Genesis chapter 49. Let's take a look at this again. It's interesting. You just said one little sentence about Natali, okay, or Natali, is a hind let loose, or deer let loose, you give of goodly words. All right, so um, that's a quick way, really, to identify uh, Norway, but we're going to go into further detail for, for those who are naysayers and say, nay, nay. All right, so anyway, um, let's go to tribal identifications of Norway here, and Let me go down here at the bottom here. I don't want to get too complicated with this here. I'm going to try to make this simple here. All right, so Natali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. The people of Natali uh, should repent. Well, yeah, because they had something to do with the Oslo agreements. I don't know if you guys ever um, looked at that, what that happened, but that had something to do with some kind of peace agreement. They, they were involved with that. And he identifies the uh, Natali with uh, the Huns, uh, the Goths, and you got to look through your history to identify those. And I don't have the time today to really go into detail about that. But see, I'm looking for something else here. All right, so let me take a look at what I have marked up here in this book. Okay, and so on page 164 of the tribes, it states here, uh, a deer or stag was the popular symbol in Scandinavia. At present, the national animal of Norway is the elk. I just proved that to you. Uh, the Naphtalites were, uh, were linked with the Danis in the same way that Dan and Naphtali were the two sons of Bill Hall, maid servant of Rachel. And let me see some other things I wanted to bring out here. Okay, and so in Deuteronomy 33, verse 23, I showed you that scripture. Let me go back to that. There we go, Attila the Hun. Thanks. Um, Deuteronomy 33, verse 23. Let me go to that here. 33. Verse 23. And Naphtali, he said, oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing. So they, this country, Norway, as you're going to see today, they are really blessed. They, they, they monetarily and everything. And possess thou the west and the south. Okay, so we're going to take a look at geography where they're located as well. But um, 
it says right here in his book on page 170, the Irish and the Highland Scots called themselves the Gaeli, G-A-E-L-I. We saw how the Israelites were first exiled. We find a section of Natali that settled for a while in the western Iran near Mane. They were known as Kadusi after the place of Kadesh, Natali, in Israel. Pliny reported that the Kadusi turned themselves G-A-E-L-I, Gaele. This is the same name that the Gaels of Ireland and Scotland used for themselves. Okay, so and here's a quote from Orjan S. V E N N S O N says, and this is on page 175 of the Tribes by Yard Davidi. The river, which since the end of World War II marks the border between Norway and Russia, is called Grant Jacobs Elv, which means Jacobs Border River. Okay, and so that's in, that's interesting as well about uh, Norway. There was something else I wanted to talk about too. Let me see. Um, and if, if I can't find this, this will be it about Norway, basically. Uh, oh, here, wait a minute, let's see. Okay, so yeah, on page uh, 164, in the Hebrew Bible, the term Na'ar or Na'im is used for use and training in the service of the king. Joseph was called a Na'er in uh, Genesis 37, verse 2. So were Moses, Joshua, David, and Solomon. Israel in general is also referred to as a Na'er. When Israel was a child, Na'er, then I loved them and called my son out of Egypt. It may be a coincidence, but the Norwegians were treated as Na'im uh, for much of their history by Danish and Swedish rulers and by their own ruling class, not suppressed, but as if they were in need of direction and from whom deference was expected and usually obtained. And so I want to talk about the blessings that, uh, if I can find this here, the blessings that Norway has, and they're really, really good. And he talked about it in the book here. I'm trying to find them. Where is that? Let's see. But they are definitely uh, a prosperous country, Norway. I might have to look them up here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, page 167, uh, the blessing of Israel. Now, remember, all the tribes have a certain amount of blessings, but not as much as Ephraim and Manasseh, who identified Manasseh as America and uh, Ephraim as Britain. Okay. And so um, the blessing of Israel, page 167 of Year Davidi, the tribes. It says, according to UN reports, Norway, for several years running, was considered to have the best standard of living in the world and is still in the running. Norwegian prosperity is based on farming, fishing, and petroleum resources. Norway has about 4.5 um, million inhabitants, okay? And so they are very, very, very um, blessed. Uh, okay, who is typing what here? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a common trait. And here's another thing I wanted to point out too. This is uh, found in rabbinical sources. The name Natali. Let me see if I have this on the um, have this up in here so you guys can see what I'm talking, read what I'm talking about here. Let me see. If not, I don't have to just read it. No. All right, so I'm just have to read it here. All right. All right, so anyway, on page 166, the name Naphtali in Hebrew can connote union or joining or wrestling. And so this is found in Genesis 30, verse 7 to 8. Let me get the scripture here.
Yeah, but this, you can look this up. A moose can be a, a, a deer. It, it's, it's one of the largest deers. Deer, Cherie. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, pun intended. Anyway, um, page 166. Um, it says right here the name Naphtali in Hebrew can connote union or joining or wrestling. And let me go to uh, this here, the scriptures again. Uh, Genesis chapter 30. And it got, you guys want more detailed information, and you can go to his website, and uh, I just don't have time to really go. It'll take about two hours to go, probably at least an hour to go through all that, and I don't want to do that today because I've got a Christian living Bible study as well. Uh, Genesis 30, verse 7, And Belah, Bilhah, and Rachel's maid conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed, and she called his name Naphtali. Okay? Now, so Naphtali is associated with wrestling here. All right? So Naphtali is the messenger and as such liable to be influenced, for better or worse, by outside influences. A record, Tiberius, of the Sea of Galilee was in the territory of Naphtali, and it is in that region where, according to tradition, the future messianic kingdom of Israel will begin, which that's a Jewish tradition there. The spies who brought back a bad report concerning the land of Israel had been selected from all the tribes. According to the research of Rabbi Fishel Ma'el, those spies representing the tribes of Naphtali and Asher were the chief instigators of the negative report that was brought back. And then uh, you have the Oslo agreements. Uh, the Jews have... This is on page 167. Jews have been forbidden to settle in Norway until 1851. This is on page 167 of the Tribes by Yerah Davidi. Uh, Norway has not been lacking in the share of anti-Semites. Despite this, leading Norwegian thinkers were strongly sympathetic toward the Jewish people. Norway was all, also very pro-Israel Zionistic up until 1970s. Descendants of the Norwegians and the Scandinavians in general in the United States were among the strongest supporters of Israel. The Oslo agreements um, and what led up to them and from the, them showed a lack of faith in the Israelite, Israelite right to the land of Canaan. The people of Norway, of Natali, should repent. And so that's the reason why he was saying that, that they should repent, because uh, uh, in the area of uh, Norway, Oslo, uh, was that a peace agreement, a so-called peace agreement. Yeah, well, hey, it's great when we learn something new. I mean, we're going to always be learning something new, at least I hope for all of our lives, you know. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, now, when it says in Genesis 49, verse 21, Genesis 49, verse 21, let me go back there. 49, verse 21. It says, Natali or Natu. Natali is a hind or a deer or a moose or an elk let loose. He giveth goodly words or beautiful words. Since the expression beautiful words in Hebrew is Amri Shefer or beauty. To our mind, Amri Shefer suggests eloquence and powers of expression. Now, he proves in his book that the Irish were linked with Natali. And so he says here the Irish are known for their eloquence, the gift of gab. Um, let me, let me uh, go over what he says here. This is significant on page 169. States here, uh, the Israelitish tribe of Naphtali became the Naphtali Huns, okay, or the Heptalites, as they are called today, who together with the Dani were once in East Scabia. From East Scabia, the Naphtali migrated to Norway and the Danes to Denmark. This is proven by Scandinavian tradition, by tracing names. You can do a search and prove that for yourself by demographic considerations, and by archaeological finds. And then this is where that quote, again, I quoted earlier. The river, which since the end of World War II marks the border between Norway and Russia, is called Grande Jacob's Elbe, which means Jacob's Border River. Okay. Now, he asked a question in the book on page 169, Natalia in Ireland. On the whole, we identify Ireland with the tribe of Asher, and we'll go over that some, some other time, but elements from other tribes were also present. In other words, even though the British people, um, a lot of them are Ephraimites, you also have elements of the other tribes in their population, but the dominant trait is uh, Ephraim, 
okay, in Britain. So anyway, um, right here it says, on a whole, we identify Ireland with the tribe of Asher, but elements from other tribes are also present. One of these appears to be Natali. Among some of the Irish, one finds aspects of Natali. All right. And so uh, the expression beautiful words, or in the King James Version, is, is quoted good, goodly words, okay, uh, means uh, Amri. Shefer, okay, in Hebrew. To our mind, Amri, Shefer suggests eloquence and powers of expression. So the Irish are known for their eloquence. The gift of gab, Irish literary ability is outstanding. Irish music and dance is also well known. Per head of population, Ireland may have made its mark in literature, music, and dance more than other countries. The Vikings were important in Ireland, especially in the East. Many of this came from Norway, and these are identifiable with Natali. The major cities of Ireland were founded by the Vikings. We identify Natali primarily, and this is on page 170 of, of uh, one of the greatest books I think ever written, Yardaviti, The Tribes. And so, um, who who is saying this? No, you are you you from you you are from Gad, Sheree. Okay, you you Swedish blood, and we'll go over that in the future. Well, you have me get identify all these other tribes. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> um, we identified Natali primarily with the Norwegians, but they are singularly lacking in such qualities. Perhaps a portion of Natali settled, well, in some things I do, perhaps a portion of Natali settled in Ireland and they took them all, or does a deeper explanation exist? Natali is known for speed, faithfulness, eloquence, and musical ability. Now, so this is interesting. Natali is known for speed, faithfulness, eloquence, and musical ability. Okay. So Dan, which uh, people are, well, Dan is going to be an interesting study on the tribe of Dan. All right, but anyway, that's a future one. Was prominent in Ireland. Dan and Natali were four brothers, sons of Bilha, B-I-L-H-A-H. The ancient capital of Ulster in North Ireland was also known as Iman Maka. Or Makha. In Hebrew, the word Imain or plain may be also rendered as Abel. Abel Bath Makha was the center of Natali. Okay, so the symbol of Natali was a female deer. The, now, this is interesting. Let me find the coat of arms of Ireland because the Irish, they, they mixed around with Natali. And so the symbol of Natali was a female deer. So the coat of arms of Northern Ireland depicts an Irish elk, a horned deer, and a lion. So let me uh, let me find that. And so we got to remember that no, the Norwegians they do have some Irish uh, connection, and so that's the reason why I'm trying to f I'm going to find this. Uh, see if I can find it here. The coat of arms or the old coat of arms, anyway, of Ireland. Do you still laughing, Sheree? Oh boy, I'm telling you. All right, so right here, here we go. So this was the old coat, and do you see the deer right there? So there's a connection. You see the, the deer? This was the old coat of arms of Northern Ireland, and there's the deer right there, okay? And so that certainly proves that they had a connection. I don't always know better than you, Sheree. Now, you know better than that. You want to start a traditional wife and husband argument on this. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait until all this is over and then we'll have a pillow fight. So anyway, um, okay. I, I would be a fool to say that that I know everything and no one knows. And someone, everything that someone knows, I know that they know out their brain. I mean, only God knows. It's, only God can say that. So, you know, I'm not God. And you know that. He's just trying to joke around with me. And so... <laughs> no, no one knows everything, and uh, I don't know if we'll ever know everything because uh, God's knowledge will always trump our knowledge. Whenever He learns something new, He's going to have to tell. He, he's going to tell us, you know. And so, um, even though you know, when we're changed and we're spirit beings, and and we'll be able to, He'll be able to tell us the secrets of the universe. He's always going to be learning something because if He tells us to grow in grace and knowledge. Obviously, He grows in grace and knowledge, and His 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 knowledge overexceeds us and always will. Even Yeshua said He was greater. His Father is greater than His Son, 
Uh, I mean, the father's always greater than the son. It should be anyway. So uh, as far as authority and, and knowledge, uh, of course, and, and, and on the earth we've got issues, but when everything is done right, the father is going to certainly be uh, superior than the son and, and, of course, his children, in, in the normal case anyway. So anyway, um, so anyway, that is the uh, the coat of arms there, and the Irish are linked, and they migrated or associated with the Norwegians, okay, which we identify with being Natali, and of course we know that the symbol of Natali is what the elk or the deer or the moose, okay, and here we are, we have a female deer, which is interesting there, okay, and so let's take a look at the geography of Norway and where they're located. Geography. So let's take a look here. Okay, so we have Norway here. And Norway, as you can see, is located, let me blow this up here. <laughs> yes, rest from our labor and rest from arguments. Anyway, <laughs> Norway geography. All right, so uh, here you go. You have Europe, and then uh, you have the British Isles here. And we went over um, America, and America's way over to the west, okay? And then uh, we talked about the British Isles, and then we talked about France being Reuben. Uh, last week okay and then you have over here you have what you have uh, Norway here all right and then here's a, a blow up of Norway and you have Sweden right next to Norway all right and then you have Oslo and that's when that peace agreement uh, occurred um, had something to do with Oslo there and then you have um, all the various areas there of Norway, okay? And so, uh, of course, Norway is located west of Jerusalem, okay? So, because um, you had the Middle East here, and then it's like northwest, actually, so it's northwest, and you go all the way. Oops, I'm sorry. You go all the way here. Here's Israel, and you're going west. Here we're going northwest. It's right there, okay. And so that's it. Does say in the prophecy that it would be west and south, okay. So we're going west. It's south, meaning that it's down right here, and it's west. You're going up here, but we're going north though, as well. So the west does have something to do with it. And so let's let's take a look at that again. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 33. And if Natali, he said, O Natali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing, and possessed thou the west and the south, so west of Jerusalem. Okay. And then, as far as the geography, um, he had mentioned something about this. Let me take a look here, real quick. And we're almost done. It might be taking a little longer time than I thought, but I just need to get this out here about old Norway. But I think the key to identify Norway is the fact that they're associated with an elk or a deer or a moose. And I think that is a, a good way to identify them quickly. Let's see if I can find the geography here and mention something about that. Um, let's see. All right, well, I think that is it with Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I've, I've given you enough. And if you want more information or identifying Naftali with Norway, um, I, I implore you to go to uh, Yodavidi's website here. He has a whole bunch of information 
on Natali uh, that I did not have the time to go over today because it's so extensive and you got to really search it out. Okay, but I gave you some foundational. Um, I gave you some foundational um, tools to do that with. So, um, right, right here, he talk. He goes into detail, and it's, it's a lot of information here, and I didn't want to go uh, too much um, with this. Um, and then there's a um, there's some kind of symbol there, right there, and then of course it has the deer attached to it there. Okay, so there's a lot of information here, so you got to dig into it and um, and do you do your own investigation. But really, the key points of Natali is that they would be located west of Jerusalem, which they are. Um, they are prosperous, which they are. Um, they, in some way, are associated with a deer, which they are. Okay, and and so that um, is certainly and then they would have uh, conflicting demeanor which they have uh their dealings with the uh, Os oslo accords and, and other matters um certainly identifies uh not tally with norwegians okay when you study their history and so forth and so he says right here the israelite tribe of natali therefore became the natali huns or the heft to Tisas, who together with danny were once in the east scythia Okay, from East Scythia, the Natali migrated to Norway. I already mentioned that. Okay, and then I mentioned the river, which since the World War II marks the border between Norway and Russia, and so forth. Oh, here's another here's another um, thing I need to say here. Norway was settled by groups such as the Natali Huns, who mainly descended from Natali. So look up Huns, and then there, there you'll be able to or the Natalite Huns. Elements from Benjamin, Gad, and other tribes are also important. The Goths from Gad ruled over Norway for some time, as did the Swedes, who are also descended now. Sweden is right next to Norway, as, as, as we can see here on the map. Um, let's take a look here. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, not Italy. Well, I got Italy here. Okay, here we go. Here, Sweden is right next to Norway. See, right there, Sweden. All right, so he says here, Okay, all right, so getting back. So Norway was settled by groups such as the Natalite Huns, who mainly descended from Natali. Elements from Benjamin, Gad, which is Sweden, and other tribes were also important. The Goths from Gad ruled over Norway for some time, as did Swedes, who were also descended from Gad after them. So, you know, it's interesting that Sweden's right next to them. The symbol of Natali was a stag or a deer, and a deer was a symbol of Scandinavian, including Norwegian royalty. The Norwegian coat of arms depicts a lion bearing an axe. A lion was one of the symbols of Gad, which is interesting because Gad, of course, let's go over Gad here. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 20. Right, and, and, and Gad, which is sweet and which we'll go over in a future time, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad, he dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. So, so um, and it's interesting that the coat of arms, uh, the picks of lying wearing an axe. A lion was one of the symbols of Gad. Moses predicted that a blow from one of the weapons of Gad would be sufficient to sever arm with the head, indicating the favorite use of a striking axe-like weapon as compared with a thrusting pointed one. The axe was something like it was one of the major weapons of the ancient Sumerians and the Mazagate, who were Goths east of the Caspian with whom the Naphtalite Huns were affiliated. So they were affiliated with the Swedes. Okay, who's talking here? Yeah, there is a connection. There is a connection, okay? And so, um, and with that connection, let's take a look at the coat of arms of Norway. Coat of arms of Norway. Okay, here we go. And so there, here's the coat of arms of Norway. Okay, and see, there you go, see the axe there, see? And you see the lion. So there, there's a connection. There's a connection with the Swedes or Gad. Yeah. 
And so uh, a lot a lot of this. And, you know, when I do the, the prophecy on Daniel chapter 7, identifying those four kings or beasts that exist as I speak in these end times, um, coat of arms and, and, and doing this history, searching for history has a lot to do with identifying who this is. Again, we're going by Proverbs 25 verse 2, which it says that you have to search out a matter. And certainly in prophecy, uh, that is the case. And so um, did I talk about this too? Yeah, we identified uh, Norway's having been settled by Natali. Uh, now we have some new points. Who is laughing? Yeah, you definitely are a lion, Sheree. I would definitely vouch that you are a lion. <laughs> That's for sure. She's a strong woman. Nothing wrong with that, you know. But you know, it's uh, you know, a lion. Can be very strong, and we all gotta learn how to control our lion lioness urges. Okay, so so you know men can act like a lion, and certainly a woman can act like a female lion, or a man act like a male lion. So, all right, so let's review Natali, uh, Natali, Nat Naphtalite Huns. They're associated with that. You can do your re uh, your history research and identify them. And you have the clans of Natali. Take a look at that. They're all associated. And it's interesting, when we get outside of Ephraim and Manasseh and Yehuda and Reuben, then a lot of these other tribes, they're kind of like linked with the other tribes, some of them, okay? And so we're going to go over that uh, as we go through all of this. So, but, it, but it's pretty interesting, uh, all of this. And so, um, let me see what else. All right, this is a um, the Apocrypha, and sometimes the Apocrypha is good used to, especially in this case. Uh, the Apocrypha book of Tobias, Tobias mentions Israelite exiles from the tribe of Natali and Eka, Batana, and rages of Media, which both joined the Caduce area. They said, this is the story of Tobit, son of Tobiel, son of Hananel, the son of Aduel, son of Gabba, whatever. Okay. <laughs> he was taken captive at the time of the Emissarios. Okay, king of Iberia from Thespi, which is south of Kadesh, Natali, and upper Galilee above Hazar, all right, uh, behind the road to the west. And after the deportation of Iberia, when I was taken captive to Nineveh, all my kinsmen grieved for me, and Akur looked after me for two years until he moved to El Mayes. All right, so the book of Tobias thus testifies to the presence of Israelites. Okay, where are we at? The book of Tobias, or Tobit, Thus testifies the presence of Israelite exiles from the tribe of Natali in the Kadusa area. Later, we have evidence of the people to the north of Skidia who were known as the Natalites, also being referred to as Kadusi or Kadusa. The very name Kadusa may, may be derived from a Hebrew word meaning holy ones. Okay? All right, so anyway, I've covered Norway, and I don't know which tribe we're going to do next week, but we're going to do another tribe. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect, and then we're going to do a Christian Bible study, a Messianic Bible study. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, stop the recording.